it's, um, but I think about it less as a dream, and I think about it more as a journey of truth and hope. Gonna start with truth. The truth is, when I was 18 and I walked into a community and I founded my first organization, a few months later, I went to the community one day and I heard a, a woman screaming for help. And I walked into a little home and I saw a young girl, Sunita, on fire. And I rushed her to a hospital and for the next 15 days I sat with her in the hospital. She had sustained 80 degree burns. And I remember on the fourth day her mother looking at me and saying, Didi, with great sadness in her eyes, I hope my daughter dies. She's better off dead. And I remember thinking, this is the truth, that we live in a country where some people face such hardship that they actually have to wonder whether their child is better off alive. And then years later, five years after I founded my second organization, Teach for India, a couple of months ago, my fellows called me with a horrendous story of something that happened in a Mumbai municipal school where they were teaching. Nine little boys during school hours dragged a little girl to the back of the school and sexually assaulted her. The boys were in fourth standard. These were eight, nine, ten-year-old boys. The next day when I met the little girl, she's the same age as my daughter. Little, tiny girl. And I thought, this too is the truth. That these children have been exposed to so much violence, so many negative messages, that they are capable at nine years of age of doing something like that to a little girl. That too is the truth. And then I look at these four children, and I call them all my children. The two on the left, Samara and Sana, live in my house. The other two are little, beautiful Indian school children. And I think often about what the difference is between those four children. And I've been asking myself that question for the last 20 years. And the real answer is there's only one difference. And that's the difference of opportunity. And so I ask myself, why is that? Why is it that I was born where I was born, and my kids have the opportunity to do whatever they want in this world, to live any dream? And yet the little beautiful girls on the right, statistics tell us, will likely not reach their potential, will likely not live their dream. And the only authentic answer I get when I ask myself that question is, someone somewhere flipped a coin. And I got lucky, and my Samara and Sana got lucky, but the other girls didn't. And I look at this number, and I think that the little girls on the right are not in the 50%, 60%, 70%. They are part of the 90% of children in this country that will not have the opportunity to go to college. The 90% that won't have the opportunity to sit where you're sitting or to sit where I had the opportunity to sit. And my Samara and Sana are in the 10%. That makes me incredibly angry. But it also pushes me to imagine in India where we're able to reverse that statistic. And then this has been an unbelievable journey of hope. And here's a story of hope. Meet Avantika, one of our 500 Teach for India fellows. Avantika Singh was an anchor with headlines today, worked for about a decade, and then decided to come into the Teach for India fellowship and teach for two years full time. And when Avantika stepped into a second standard class, her children were at a pre-K level, which means they couldn't read or write alphabets. They couldn't speak a word in English. And Avantika called me, like, really upset, saying, I can't do this. I've been a successful anchor all of my life, and I'm failing every single day. The odds are stacked too much. 
much against my kids. And then a year and a half later, I walked into Avantika's class a couple of months ago, and I saw her kids sitting at the edge of their seats, and they were reading and analyzing Oliver Twist. And not an abridged version of Oliver Twist, the unabridged, thick version of Oliver Twist. And I was thinking, this is unbelievable. In one and a half years, this is what she's achieved. And this is not a story about reading, and it's not a story about Oliver Twist. It's a story about every single one of her kids knowing that they can live their dreams. They can have equal choice. It's a story of equity. And I remember walking out with my city director that day, and we looked at each other, and I said, Google Oliver Twist. And she Googled Oliver Twist and found out that that's a sixth standard text. Her third graders are reading at a sixth standard level. And then, in the middle of all her kids, please meet Seema, who came into my first organization, Akanksha, when she was 10 years old, and didn't want to be there, and didn't want to study, and she had the most incredible teacher who would go every day to her little home in the slum. No father, both her elder brothers had dropped out of school, and drag her to school and say, Seema, I believe in you. And so Seema first graduated from school, then not only graduated from college, but stood second in college, and then three years ago, her dream had been to do an MBA and to get a job in corporate India so she could lift her family out of poverty. And she applied, and she got the MBA, but at the same time, she applied, and she got a fellowship at Teach for India. And I remember her calling me saying, Didi, I have a big problem. I don't know what to do. And I said, Seema, you'll figure it out. And Seema chose to leave Mumbai, move to Pune, and become a teacher at Teach for India. And I asked her months later, I said, what helped you decide? I mean, it's hard to convince students at IIM to take the risk to do this for two years. Like you, your whole family depended on it. It took unbelievable courage. And she looked at me calmly and she said, a teacher changed my life. A teacher made me who I am. What could I possibly do that could be more important than being that teacher for another 40 kids? And so that, too, is a story of hope. Truth and hope. The truth is there are 320 million children in this country who need and deserve not just an education, but an excellent education. The hope is each one of us has it in us to help our country realize that dream. I'm going to show you now a little video and just a minute of context before that. So Sanaya came into this classroom. This is a grade four classroom in a low-income school in Pune. Her children were at a pre-kindergarten level, same as Avantika's, no English, had never been invested in education. And I and my colleague walked into this classroom. This video was shot on our phone. It's not a very good video. But I want to take you into the world of what is possible. This is after nine months of intervention. What's your name? My name is Anushka. This is Mistakes Done. So what do you say? Mistakes and mistakes can be good. I must not in any book there are sign words like walls in, in reading center also. We read the sign word chart. So we can read fast sentences as we can fast in book also then we can. Eleven exactly. Okay, I tell you what we know. It's 
graduate from that school and go to college. And so Michael Johnston went in there and he got all his ninth standard students together and he said, I promise you that every single one of you, he had 44 children, will graduate from school with admission into a four-year college and the scholarship money to get there. And they looked at him and they said, you're crazy, Mr. Johnston. That's never happened before. And he worked with them for the next four years. Every week he'd bring his kids together and he'd said, where are we on the mountain to college? And if I'm here and you're here, what are we going to do to get the kid that's here, here? Because it wasn't just about one child getting there. It was about all 44 kids getting there. And then he tells an incredible story of class 12 when the admission letters started rolling in and he said every time a kid would get admission into college he would take them all into a large hall like this 
and on one side of the hall was a very rickety ladder, and on the other side of the hall the kids would line up. And the kid who got admission could choose their favorite song, and the song would be playing loudly in the hall, and the child would run across the hall, climb up the ladder that was being held by the friends who supported him to get there, and sign his name on the board. And they'd all say, 43 to go. And then more admission letters came in, and they'd say, 34 to go, 25 to go, 10 to go. And he tells the story of the last child to get admission into college, a little boy called Travis. And he said when Travis chose his song and played his song and ran across the hall and climbed that rickety ladder and signed Travis on the board, they all realized that the impossible is possible. Because see, now someone had done it and no one could say that it wasn't possible or that it was only possible for the 80%. All 44 kids went to college with the scholarship money to get there. And I think about that, and I think about that story of truth and hope. The truth was 50% of them would not have made it. The hope that he gave them was that all of them would be able to live their dream. And that's my greatest hope, that one day we can hold our heads high and when we think about instances like the Get Delhi gang rape, or just before that, what happened with Adam waking up one day thinking he could shoot his mother in the head and go into an elementary school, when we think about those things, they will be things of the past and things that no longer happen because we've raised generations of children who think that those things are unthinkable, who think not just about themselves, but equally about the other, and who know that to change the world starts by me just changing myself. Thank you.